Hey guys, welcome to the video and today we'll be learning how we can create route handlers or API routes in Next.js. Since Next.js is a full stack framework, it also allows us to create API route handlers using which we can have both the backend and frontend of the application within the same code base. So let's get started with the tutorial. First, we'll create a new Next.js app by using the create next app command. So we'll copy the command here and paste it in the terminal on VS code. Now this is an interactive command and it will take us to the steps that are necessary for creating a new Next.js app. So we'll name the project as route handler. And for the rest of the steps, we'll just go through the defaults that the command presents us. So for TypeScript, we'll select no. We won't be using Tailwind CSS. Now this particular prompt here is important because here it's recommending us to use the app router in Next.js. Now, please make sure that you guys are using app router itself. If you select no here, it will switch to the page router, which was introduced in the older version of Next.js. Since Next.js 13, it's recommended to use the app router. So we'll click on yes. And after going through all of the prompts, we'll wait for the dependencies to finish installing and our new Next.js app will be ready. Now a new app has been created. We'll go inside the directory route handlers and we'll open the directory in a new window on VS code. As you can see here, our new project is ready and all the source code of our application is present within the app directory. Let's go ahead and start the dev server by running the npm run dev command inside our terminal. So we'll open the terminal and type in the npm run dev command. Our server is up on localhost port 3000. Let's go ahead and see how our application looks like. So here we have the standard next year starter application. And by default, we don't have any route handlers in the app folder. So let's go to the next year's documentation and see how we can define routes and create route handlers. Next year's uses a file system based routing where folders are used to define routes. And this stays true even for route handlers. So looking at the example here, if we create a dashboard folder inside our app directory and then create a settings folder inside it, we will be able to access the dashboard settings route here on our address bar. So something like this. Currently, if we hit on enter, we will be getting a 404 error. But if we create the settings folder by following the same folder structure. So first, if we have the dashboard folder and then within it, we have the settings folder. And just for the time being, if we create a very simple dummy page.js file inside of it. And for the JSX of this file, we'll just copy the contents that have been provided to us here in the creating UI example. And now if you go back and refresh the page, you'll be able to see that dashboard settings is now rendering the message hello next.js, which is being returned from the page.js file. Now API routes will be also following the same routing mechanism. So if you go back to the documentation and move to the route handler section, you'll notice that all we have to do is add a route.js file inside a API folder. So for example, if I want to create an API route with the route name as dashboard settings. So all I have to do is within the settings folder, create a new folder by the name of API and I will create a new file by the name of route.js inside of it. Now, as the documentation says, route handlers have access to the standard web request and response APIs. And using these two APIs, we will be able to read the incoming HTTP request and send back a valid HTTP response. So let's go ahead and create our first basic API route handler. And for that, all we need to do is export an async function with the method name of the API as the name of the function. So for example, if I'm creating a get API route handler, all I have to do is export an async function by the name of get. So I'll copy this code from here and paste it inside a new route.js file. Now, if I want to return any response from this particular function, I'll have to use the HTTP response API, which we can access from here. And we'll be using the static method JSON, which is made available to us through the response API. Now this method helps us in sending back JSON data as an HTTP response. 
we'll go back to our route handler and within the body of the get function we'll say that we would like to return a json response so we'll type in response dot json and pass a valid javascript object inside of it for example within our object we can have a settings key whose value is another object and have some nested values inside of it for example we'll say the port is 3000 and route is dashboard settings we'll save our changes and then go ahead and test our api endpoint and for that all you have to do is just append the api route segment in front of the route segment representing its folder structure so since our api folder is present within the dashboard settings folder we'll just type in power slash api as a next route segment and hit on enter and as you can see here we are getting a valid api response back we were able to test the api here on chrome itself because we can access all get api routes from the browser itself now since we're done with the basics let's go ahead and create our first proper api which will be fetching data from this database running on mongodb atlas cloud service so let's go ahead and see what kind of collections we have inside this database and as of now we have a collection by the name of users which has four user entries let's try to fetch these four users by creating a new api route handler by the name of users so for that we'll go back to our vs code we'll create a new folder by the name of users inside the app directory and then to create a new api we'll create the api directory and place our route.js file inside of it we'll be creating a get route itself to fetch all of the user details so we'll create so here we'll say export async function get and then as a next step we'll copy some of the utility functions that we need to connect to the database now the creation of these utilities is not a part of this particular tutorial so we'll just skip on that the two main utilities that we needed here are the create connection method which connects to the database and then the main collection model using which we can query the database so i'll add these two imports here and i'll repeat that you do not have to worry what these functions are doing inside of them because their implementation does not matter we are just focusing on how we can create api routes so within our out handler i'll first call the create connection method and since it's an asynchronous method i'll add the await keyword in front of it once we have an active connection to the database we'll use the user dot find method that is being exposed by the user model to fetch all of the objects that are present within the users table and since again this is an asynchronous function i'll add the await keyword in front of it and store the fetch results in a variable by the name of users and once we are done fetching the users all we have to do is return the fetch data and for that we'll use the same json method which is being exposed by the response api which we used a few minutes back in our sample api so we'll say return response dot json and we'll simply pass the users list that we fetched inside of it as an argument we'll save our changes and we'll go back to our browser where we can test our get route by mentioning the route name as users and then we'll append the api keyword in front of it we'll hit on enter and as you can see now we are getting the four user objects that we have in our mongodb database being returned in the response of the route handler so if i collapse this entire list you'll see that we have four items here now you might get a doubt as to what was the use of this request parameter that we are passing to our route handlers and this request object is just an instance of the request api that's been mentioned here and this request object will have all of the instance properties that have been mentioned here in the documentation so for example there is one property by the name of url so let's say if you also want to return the request url in the response of your route handler what you can do is simply add it to the json response that is being returned by the request handler so here we'll wrap our users array in an object and we'll add a new key by the name of url whose value will be request.url we'll save all of our changes go back to the browser and hit the users api route again 
This time we'll notice that our response is an object with two keys, users and URL. And the value of the URL key is being fetched from the request parameter that our get route has access to. Now, one last thing that I wanted to add about API route handlers is that the route handlers support the get post put patch delete head and options method only as mentioned here in the documentation and if we send a different method name we will get back a 405 method not allowed response from the route handler within the route.js file so far we have only created get routes but let's say if i wanted to create a post route all i'll have to do is export an async function by the name of post within the same file. And for example, let's say this post method for now returns a JSON response with the message, hello. So I'll save the new changes. And since it's a post request, we cannot trigger it from the browser. We'll have to go to an API tool like Postman to test it out. So I'll open Postman. Now here I have opened the earlier API route handler that we created, which was for the get method. If I hit this API, we get the list of users, but if I change the method to post and hit the API, I'm getting the message hello in the response. Now this was possible because within the same users API folder under the route.js file, I created a new post function and exported it. So similarly, you can create route handlers for other methods too. In the future, I'll be uploading a new video where I'll be creating all the four create, read, update and delete APIs for the users MongoDB collection that I showed you earlier. So stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in learning how to integrate MongoDB with Next.js. And that was it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.